Welcome to my Soul Series. Soul Series is part of Oprah and Friends, exclusively on XM Radio Channel 156. And you can listen to the entire Soul Series collection on xmradio.com slash Oprah. Well, I'm really, really excited today to meet a woman named Byron Katie. Now, I've heard a lot about her uh, in the spiritual circles. Uh, a friend of mine had told me about one of her books years ago, and most recently, another friend called me up and said, have you heard of The Work, Byron Katie, The Work? I go, yeah, I keep hearing about this woman, Byron Katie. So I got her book, Loving What Is, started reading it, and loved it so much because it brought me to another level of thinking about resisting what is. And so this whole idea of being able to accept the moment for what the moment has to offer and not resisting it is something I want to talk to her about. And also, but if you don't resist, do you just walk around all the time like not resisting? We're going to find out today with Byron Katie. It's uplifting, enlightening, Truly powerful. Welcome to Soul Series. Hi, welcome to my Soul Series. It's a time to kick back and simply, for me, engage in what I think is the richest conversation any of us can have in our lives, with our lives, about our lives, and that's about who we really are, about the stuff in life that truly matters mm -hmm. to, to all of us. And uh, my guest today, Byron Katie, author of A Thousand Names for Joy, Living in Harmony with the Way Things Are. And she's the founder of The Work, a process of inquiry from which she offers anybody who can learn to identify and question the thoughts that cause their suffering. Katie, everybody calls you, right? Yeah. I just want to say a few things about, because uh, everyone who is listening to this series, no doubt you understand that we're also doing um, online with Eckhart Tolle, our class for New Earth. And Eckhart Tolle whom you've um, undoubtedly heard me talk about in, over the past several months, says of Katie's work that it is a great blessing for our planet, is how he describes it. It acts like a razor-sharp sword that cuts through illusions and enables you to know for yourself the timeless essence of your being. He goes on to call your book Loving What Is, the key to knowing your natural state, which is joy, mm. peace, and love. Yes. That's a pretty good compliment coming yeah, from. He's he's a dear friend. Yeah. He's a dear friend um, for everyone. You know what I found? Your work takes the the message that uh, Eckhart speaks of in A New Earth to the next level. It's yeah. about putting it in process yes. on a daily basis. It's like Eckhart is what and the work is how. Mm -hmm. And we've had these masters throughout the centuries and mm -hmm. centuries. And But how do we do it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, well, the work is how. Paint a picture for us. How old were you? What was going on in your life? I was 43 mm -hmm. when um, this experience happened to me. Okay. And um, and I had been suffering just deep, deep, deep depression, suicidal mm -hmm. even, and agoraphobic. I couldn't leave my bedroom uh, often for uh, days and weeks other than just to go to the toilet. And wow. Um, my hair would stick to me. It, it, it was it, it was a horrible way to live. I was well over two hundred pounds, and I was desperate. And and later, I found that simply it was the effect of believing my thinking, the thoughts that that we're all thinking all the like, time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like that like, run our lives. Mm -hmm. My children don't respect me. They they should mind me and. It was um, that the world doesn't understand. People really don't understand my suffering, my pain. And, and, and you know, um, uh, victims are violent people, I've mm. come to see. Really? And I was uh, such a victim and therefore violent, full of this, this hatred turned rage, inward. Rage. 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 Right. So yeah. not even thinking yourself worthy, Katie, to sleep in a bed. You're sleeping on the floor. And mm -hmm. tell us what happened. Well, actually, as I lay asleep on the floor one morning, um, actually a cockroach crawled over my foot and I opened my eyes and in place of all that darkness was a joy that I just simply can't describe. But the thing that is really important that I realized is that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. But when I questioned my thoughts, I don't suffer. 
And mm. I've come to see that this is true for every human being. Tell us, were you a spiritual person mm. before? I mean, during mm. all of this depression and horrible times, was no. there a God that you believed in mm. or a God that you felt badly that you didn't believe in? Yeah, there was a God I cursed. Mm -hmm. I really blame God for my condition also, mm -hmm. <laughs> along with everyone and everything else. And um, I just came to see differently. I had no teacher. I didn't have a religion, nothing. Well, is it mm -hmm. kind of like, I think, uh, Eckhart several weeks ago when we were doing our uh, A New Earth series and also in his book, A Power of Now, describes the moment where he says, I felt I cannot live, I'm so miserable, I cannot live with myself yes. any longer. Yeah. And then I question, who is the I and who is the myself? Are mm -hmm. there two of us? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're describing? Well, it, it was, it was, it, it's, it's like that in hindsight. In hindsight, yes. it is. All yeah. right. But, you know, there's, I've come to see that there's, there's, you know, one mind, as people say, and I've really come to realize that. And I've come to see also in that one mind that there are no new stressful thoughts. So if we, if we all, or just one, you know, I'm always speaking to myself, yes. just questioned those stressful thoughts, it frees the mind up. So when we, when we question our thoughts, we don't suffer. When we believe our thoughts, we do. The stressful ones. The stressful ones. Because the, the ones like, I really care about you. Isn't this a wonderful world? I love seeing you. All these, all these thoughts. I love my children. Those thoughts are working for us. And who cares if they're, if they're true or not? They're working for us. If mm -hmm. you're in a wonderful dream, do you want someone to wake you up? No. no. But if you're in a nightmare... Don't you want someone to wake you up? Well, that's what this work is for. That's what the was work that, is for. Was the cockroach moment, um, Katie, was that what you call waking up to reality? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking to Byron Katie, author of Loving What Is. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. So you have the reality experience with the cockroach. Mm -hmm. You're there lying on the floor. And then what happens? The mind hit. The mind hit. And, and... In that moment, I saw that what I was believing, what I was being hit with was not true for me wow. because I had just had the experience that, uh -huh. that it wasn't. Uh -huh. and, um, and then in that moment, the world instantly happened. There were walls and ceilings and sky and floor and, and bed. And you saw everything differently. Everything differently. What is it that you absolutely realized, mm. Katie, in that awakening moment? Mm on that floor. What is it that you absolutely realize that you could clarify for for our listeners? That I am whatever I believe me to be. Mm -hmm. And then when you question that, Oprah, it doesn't leave much. If it leaves anything at all, for me, it's gratitude and how can I help? It's gratitude and surface. And okay, but if you are whatever you believe yourself to be, then why couldn't you be also, the depressed person, mm -hmm. the person who isn't good enough, the person who's mm -hmm. never made it, the person who's not loved by her mm -hmm. children, the person who's mm -hmm. not been received because by... Because I can't believe the thoughts that are happening that tell me that. Mm -hmm. If someone said, Katie, you're worthless, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I realize how painful it is to believe that about someone, yourself or, or anyone. So if someone says, Katie, I don't care about you. I just think, I hope they do better. I know how painful that is to see another human being as less than you see yourself. Okay. And if someone says, Katie, I, I love you. I think, oh my goodness, isn't that person doing well? They love they love, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's the highest standard for mm -hmm. a balanced mind. Did you question your sanity at all? Did you think, whoa? Cause I would my, think. my family did, but yeah. I, knew, I knew what insanity was, and I knew I frightened people with this awakening, and so I've, um, I continued to learn balance. Mm -hmm. So you immediately started counseling people then? Because mm -hmm. who knew? Because well, you've been this depressed and yes. agoraphobic all this time. So why is anybody yeah. now coming to your door? Well, it was such a radical experience. It was such a change that even my children didn't recognize me. And and um, so word of mouth happened, and I didn't know what it was. So um, people called, and they said, can you help me? And I said, you know, I don't even know what this is. But what I can tell you is... 
you know, whatever it is, it's yours. And so actually people would come live with me. I thought maybe it was the air, the food, the, you know, I had no idea what it was. I had to find references as I went along and people gave me my references. Mm -hmm. So the work is called an inquiry. You call it the inquiry. Mm -hmm. When you were down there lying with the cockroach, Mm -hmm. did the four questions come to you then? It was automatic. I saw that nothing was true, and then I saw the mind hit, and I saw the mind believed it. Okay. And so that's... Okay, say that again, slowly. You saw that nothing was true? Yes. It's like nothing was true. Nothing was true? Nothing. No oh, identification. Boy. Then the mind hit, Yeah. and I saw that the mind wasn't true, and I saw that people believed their thoughts, mm-hmm. but it simply wasn't true for me. That doesn't mean that it's not true for them. So... The first four, the work is four questions and a turnaround. So the first question, you're believing, for example... um, Let me turn in my book to the questions. Okay. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. The first question is, is it true? For example, uh Mm -hmm. example, if if I had the thought, um, he doesn't care about me. Right. The first question is, is it true? The second question, can I absolutely know that it's true he doesn't care about me? Mm -hmm. The third question, how do you react when you believe the thought he doesn't care about I, he doesn't care about me yeah. well the whole world is born out of that you know maybe i become angry or I, be, I become sad okay so tell us how this worked with you first you 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 are there are feeling depressed miserable mm-hmm. distraught all those things mm-hmm. that many people have felt yes and the question comes is it true mm-hmm. well i would think mm-hmm. the answer would be for you know many people who have felt this themselves mm-hmm. and almost anyone listening has, yeah, I am. I'm miserable. I'm pretty miserable. And that's an honest answer. And that's all that's all that's required is the willingness to answer the questions. That's okay. all. So the answer would be yes. And I say, uh, can you absolutely know that it's true that you are worthless? And they might answer yes again because the mind immediately is giving them all the proof and right. all the images. All right. That's how the mind works. Right. So yes, so I'm worthless. Third, and yes, I know I'm worthless. Yes. And and so how far do you... I'm not doing so good. <laughs> yeah, so so far. <laughs> and so the third question: How do you react when you believe the thought that you're worthless? Oh, and what it makes happen... me feel even w- more worthless? Yes, that your stomach could could rotate. Your, yes, you know, tears could happen. Yeah. Depression happens. Yes, and we we become unkind and and we wonder what is the matter with us. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to talk that way to people. I don't want to 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 hurt people and and we're striking out and then the mind how we react how do we react when we think that thought Mm -hmm. the mind attacks and then it comes back and attacks you and then guilt happens correct and so it is this swerve and how do i react when i believed the thought i compulsively overate I drank, I sm- I d- all these addictions kicked in. Mm-hmm. All, you know, it's how we react when we believe these stressful thoughts. So then the fourth question, who would you be without that, that thought? thought? And then just to sit and get still and don't change anything. And and I invite all, all the listeners to to just close their eyes and look at their life, just the way they live it. At mm-hmm. the market, at home, doing the dishes, whatever it is, going to work, walking, to look back at their life only, drop the thought. Who would you be without your story? Just to drop the thought and look at your life. And you see, like... Um, yes, you, because in, many, in almost every situation, if not every situation, mm-hmm. it's not what is happening. It's what we tell ourselves or the thoughts that we have about what, what's happening. Yes that make it whatever it is. Yes. That's right. And we can have all kinds of thoughts about it. It's do we believe them or not? Right. That's right. the key. Yeah, right. So then I invite people after those four questions. May I read from, from just mm-hmm. a page? Uh, I don't know the page. Oh, it's page one. Um, a few basic principles in uh, loving what is, is you say, noticing when your thoughts argue with reality, the only time, I was underlined, mm-hmm. the only time we suffer is when we believe a thought that argues with what is, when the mind is perfectly clear, what is, is what we want. And I wrote down, okay, what if someone is being really, really inappropriate? You're in a situation where something is happening and you don't want it to happen. 
You, you, you even go to the place where it's happening. I don't want it to happen. I'm not going to resist it. I'm going to accept what is. But it still isn't necessarily what you want. Well, I would say change it. With then change all it. of your power, change it okay. right here, right now, because that's the only opportunity you have okay. right here, right now. So you change it. And if that doesn't work, then open your mind and see a higher way Okay, because it, it's got to be. You also say, I'm a lover of what is, not because I'm a spiritual person, but because it hurts when I argue with reality. Yes. But I wonder if we if we take this approach, you say, when we stop opposing reality, action becomes simple, fluid, kind, and fearless. Yes. I'm thinking, though, if we don't oppose reality, when reality is something that we are opposed to, mm -hmm. we don't oppose it, well, how do we ever get anything done? Reality is the story of a past. Okay. How so? And we can change the past now. Okay, so reality is... so. On um, the discussion we've just had right now mm -hmm. is the past. It's over. Gone. And it's reality. Yeah. So if something happened between us that we wanted to shift, we have the power to shift it now. Right now. Yes. And I've come to see that defense is the first act of war. So if I, mm, I if I one. if I shift. If I attempt to defense shift Defense is the first act of war. So yes. the moment you start to defend, you put yourself in a position of creating war. And Absolutely. who did it? I did, the oh. moment I defended. Okay. So we can discuss any shift, or I can discuss any shift. Like, I can give you my experience. I can give you my education, my educated view, if, if one happens to be there on the, on the, top, uh -huh. on the topic. And that's all I've got. Uh -huh. That's what I've got, my wisdom, okay. my experience. Um, is that to say that nothing is worthy of defense? Lots of things are worth defending. Defense is war. And I say all war belongs on paper. That's where it belongs. So we can look at it and question those thoughts we're believing. Okay, I got it. I just got the shift in. Because I was yeah. thinking when you said that, I'm working on this mm -hmm. whole program to really shift the way mm -hmm our country looks at child abuse. And I was thinking, I'm defending the children, I'm defending the children. And even as you said that, I realized I'm really not trying to defend the children, I'm trying to protect them, which is different. Yes, and you're educating us. Shift. And you're shift, educating shift. them. I just had a shift. And Excellent. that if I try to defend them, that I will end up being a part of the war. Of the problem. The problem, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, I can't have and, a war against anything. Yes. Yeah. That's how wars begin. Yeah, okay, you know, I got it. I'm going to defend my point of view. You got it. I got I got that. So I want to actually do the work with you. But the other thing that I love that you present early on in Loving What Is is about the, the, the three businesses. You say there's your business, mm -hmm. there's everybody else's business, and there's, God, there's God's yes. business. Yes. And I just wanted to share that with, with you, the listener out there, because if you just get that, if you just got that, from today's conversation, you could really, really tend to your business and leave other people's business alone. So powerful. If we, can you imagine if we all took care of our business? You just did your business. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting because there was something going on recently and my girlfriend, Gail, said, you need to call up this person and you need to talk to them and blah, blah, blah. And I got pulled into it and I did. <laughs> and I'm on the phone and I'm telling this person what they should be doing. And just as I hung up the phone, I thought, this is going to come back to me and it's not going to be good. And it's not going to be good because I now am in somebody else's business. I should stay in my own business and tend to, because that's the only business I have any control over. That's right. So there's your business, mm -hmm. everybody else's business, and God's business. Yes. And if, if any, anyone feels lonely, separate, then ask yourself mentally, whose business are you in? And it can just bring you right back to where you really are. And that's where the change can take place. You say, staying in your own business. I can find only three kinds of business in the universe, mine, yours, and God's. When I'm worried about earthquakes, floods, war, or when I will die, I'm in God's business. Do I know what's right for me? That is my only business. Let me work with that before I try to solve your problems for you. And isn't that a full-time job? Mm -hmm. That's a full-time yes. <laughs> job. Just to stay in your own business. All right, that's our message for today. Stay in your own business and out of other people's business. Mm -hmm. Mentally. Mentally. Yeah. yeah. Loving what is. Byron Katie, come back, would you? 
I'd and we're going to put the work to work uh, with me and with you uh, who are listening. You're listening to my Soul Series on Oprah and Friends. Thanks for joining us. Fascinating. The Work by Byron Katie. I hope you enjoyed this edition of our Soul Series. These are some of my favorite conversations. To hear more, sign up for a free 30-day XM Radio trial by going to www.xmradio.com slash Oprah.